Hello and welcome to Market Briefing. I'm Martin Bakernax, European Business Editor here at the IB Times UK. Well, we've got a mixed picture for European stocks, modest gains in some of the indices and modest declines in others. There's no great narrative and ultimately what you're seeing is more attention being paid to some of the individual economic pieces of information than the broader market. Stocks got off to a good start at least from the Asia perspective after a better than expected reading of GDP out of South Korea. But it didn't really filter through into the European session. A couple of reasons for that, but let's start with the economic data points here in Europe. Firstly, the UK economy, probably the most significant. It's the first quarter GDP reading for the UK economy, second largest in Europe. It's not in the Eurozone, but certainly in the European Union. It grew 0.3% in the three months ending in March. That is much better than analysts were looking for and allows the UK to avoid that so-called triple dip recession. Now, it was the service sector that delivered to growth. About 0.5% came from that portion of the economy, which makes up around two-thirds of it, and not much came from exports or manufacturing. No great surprise when you consider that the Eurozone is still mired in its own recession, and the Eurozone is the biggest and most important destination for UK exports. Nonetheless, these figures will relieve some of the political pressure on Chancellor George Osborne, and when coupled together early with figures earlier this week showing the deficit marginally improving, you could make the case that the austerity first economic strategy of the Chancellor and his Prime Minister David Cameron are beginning to bear fruit. It's early days and there might be revisions to this data because it's only the first look, but nonetheless it's a relatively positive surprise. The pound jumped the most in a month on foreign exchange markets trade around 154.12 against the US dollar and gilt futures began to tick downwards as the assumption of stronger growth relieves some of the demand for these uh, risk averse assets. That wasn't the case, unfortunately, in Spain, where bond yields are rising and investors are starting to get even more concerned about the fate of the fourth largest economy in the Eurozone. Unemployment breached 27% in the first quarter of this year, hit a record high 27.2, and youth unemployment in Spain came in at a staggering 55.7%. Collectively, there are more than 6.2 million Spaniards who are out of work, and that comprises around one-fifth of the Eurozone unemployment total. It's an absolutely cataclysmic figure and suggests that the economic policies of Prime Minister Mariano Rajoy are simply not delivering the job growth that is absolutely essential in this very important economy. Now, tomorrow he's going to unveil some more economic strategy points, but investors are going to need to be very comfortable with what they see if they're going to allow for any in decrease, I should say, in government borrowing costs. Now, Spain borrowed at a record low earlier this week in certain Treasury bill auctions, but today we saw 10-year Treasury debt yields rise to about, uh, about 10 to 15 basis points after the unemployment data. Now, they're getting an enormous amount of support from the European Central Bank, and the ECB is going to have to consider these figures very carefully when it meets next week to judge its next move on interest rates. But that jobs picture in Spain and indeed elsewhere in the Eurozone, where they continue to set month-on-month -month record highs for unemployment, is absolutely critical in understanding where this economy is going and really questioning the policymakers and what they're going to do in order to try to turn it around. You can check out all those stories and a lot more on the Economy page. We'll see you tomorrow. Thank you.